Hello. Well, I should have been making more videos, but I didn't. My other phone died on me, so I finally got me a phone that uh, hopefully takes better pictures, but it don't look like it. Anyway, some of you know that I left Indiana with my wife and a friend, and we was going to follow what God told us to do. And we was on our way to Four Corners, and we, we made it to Four Corners. We did. And when we got there, there was they were locked up. The Navajo had uh, the Four Corners locked up so tight you couldn't get on it if you tried. It just sound, seemed really weird. But was even weirder was I always wondered I wondered what it was God uh, had me go to Four Corners for. It's in the middle of nowhere if you've never been. I mean, in the middle of nowhere because I've never been there and never even heard of it. So, until God told me to go to Four Corners. I get to Four Corners, and I read that they was already closed, you know, before we went. And uh, I thought, now, God told me to go all the way to Four Corners. So, we get there, and if you don't, if you're on Facebook, go to... Uh, not perfect Christians. I've got some pictures up there that I still don't know how to do that on face, uh, YouTube. But there was a man sitting there. His name was Jeremiah. Young guy, probably 30 years old. And he had been down in uh, Arizona, Quartzsite. They have a big gym show down there every year, uh, if you've never been. Well, this guy, he said that uh, after he quit drinking and everything, he did quit doing drugs. He turned to God, and one day in Arizona, he uh, decided, he heard God say, go to Four, four Corners. I said, well, why did you go? And he said, you'll never believe it. I said, try me. I said, because I'm standing here in Four Corners and have no idea why I'm here. And this guy says, uh, because God told me to come here and to wait on two people to give me a ride. And yeah, that, I, I was like, are you kidding me? Because, you know, we just got our little car here. This is what we got. There's three of us. We've been staying in motels, but we, uh, we're having fun. We're enjoying what God's done for us. He's given us plenty. We haven't run out of money, and actually we've gained money, believe it or not. But we've stayed in motels every night. Thank God. But this guy was standing there at Four Corners. And he said, I have sit here for three days. And then he was on his fourth date. And the Navajo police had threatened him. They're, I mean, they did everything to get him to leave. And nobody knows why. They say that there is a, uh, a vortex at Navajo at the Four Corners. And I don't know if it had anything to do with that, but the whole thing just seemed a little fishy to me. They had that place, you couldn't, you can't fly drones there, you can't do nothing over that area, and it's wide open. Yes, they had got hit by the uh, COVID, but uh, they didn't, it wasn't, it's wide open. It's not like you go into the, in the buildings or anything. Well, they had threatened to call the cops and they said, go ahead because if you stay on the highway, you're on federal property. You get off the highway, you're on Navajo land. So they knew they couldn't get rid of him. And he says, it didn't matter if Satan himself come and told him to leave. He said, I don't care. He said, when you hear the voice of God, you do it. And to me, I'm thinking, are you kidding? You know, here two weeks ago or whenever it is, I said, I left told my wife I said we got to sell it all we got to go and yes thank God for my wonderful wife but this is I don't know this guy he was standing there for quite a long time and we got to talking a lot about God and what he done for him you know I'm a two-year uh, been out I quit drinking two years ago and greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my life and only those that have uh, quit a substance will understand, you know, because it's something that you you have to have. You have to have it more than God. You have to have it more than your family, everything. 
Mine, thank God, was just alcohol. Where some of them, I have a best friend die of a drug overdose, a heroin overdose. He was like my brother. There's a few things I won't do. I don't mind somebody smoking pot. It don't bother me a bit. But you do heroin and it, it just hits me the wrong way. I've seen wonderful people just become vegetables. It's horrible. But this guy, Jeremiah, the longer we talked and I knew, he said, you're not the ones that he, God told me to wait for. He said, when they come, I will know and they'll tell me that uh, they are, they're there because God sent them there for me. I said, what are the odds of two people that didn't have any idea what in the world they're doing at a place called Four Corners in the middle of nowhere in the Southwest? You know, you got Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. And we stayed there and they ran, they actually ran us out of the parking lot outside the gate, but he wouldn't leave. And we went down the road about two miles and turned around and come back and they was still harassing him, but he just sat right where he's at. Wonderful young man. And until you've heard the word of God, until you've heard his voice, and every Christian better learn what God's voice is. Because when God tells you it's time to go and you turn around, do you have something in your life that you'd turn around for? For years I did. I don't have anything now I would turn around for. I have everything God's given me, but I've got things God gave me 20 times in my life. I know how people feel when they lose it all to a fire or any other way, but you've got to trust in God. We're getting ready to come into the worst time in known history ever. The Bible says there would be in no other time like this. And if you're sitting there and you see this video and you're thinking, boy, that dude's crazy. Well. I am crazy, but I'm crazy for God. I painted on the front of my old truck, Jesus Freak, and I got made fun of all the time, but that was in 2007, right after I got saved. And believe me, when you find out that you were saved by the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't care how many times you're, told, you're called crazy. I'd much rather be called crazy for God than to be sitting someplace in a nice warm house afraid to do anything. If God told you to get up and go, would you? Do you know God's voice enough? Do you know what Jesus wants in this life? Do you, do you have any idea? I don't know what God has for me. This is why I am in Winnemucca, Nevada, one of the most beautifulest places that you'll ever see. And it's cold here, but it is beautiful. And tomorrow we are going into Oregon. I got my driver's license straightened out. So I'm going up to the Pacific Ocean, taking my wife and a friend, and we're gonna go up through there and maybe up through uh, Idaho back towards the house. So I hope to make more videos. And I know most of these videos don't mean nothing to nobody, but God has us on a journey and I don't know where it's taking us. I have no clue. After my other phone, would not allow me to take a 20 second video let alone a 10 minute video but i finally broke down and found one in kansas to that was good enough to take videos with and uh, anyways i hope to god if you don't understand what god's got in your life please pray we don't have time time's up time is up if you don't know what's happening in the Middle East or even here on our own soil, you better start looking because how many people are gonna be blindsided when a bomb gets dropped in the middle of America? Do you know? Are you ready for that? Are you ready to take your tell your children, you didn't listen to God, so I'm sorry, we're gonna die. It's that important. I don't care. Call me crazy. I don't care. But when God tells you to do something, do it. And if I got enough time, I'm going to tell you this bit, this thing. There's a girl, and this lady, she was on fire for the Lord. And she did everything when she got the urge, no matter what it was, she would do it for God. Well, this lady, 
she was in Walmart one day and she come out of Walmart and God told her to stand on her head in front of a Coca-Cola machine. She done thought he done lost his mind. But she said, well, he's never told me anything different. So in front of God and everybody, she stands on her head in front of this Coca-Cola bottle uh, machine. And when he does, she does, she thought she got down and she looked around. And she's like, well, everybody's staring at me, but I guess nothing's going on. So she walked into her car. She got up to her car and this guy taps her on the back of the shoulder. And this is how important it is to listen to God. He tapped her on the shoulder and he says, ma'am, he said, my wife left. She took the kids. She said, I was done. I was ready to pull the trigger. And he pulled out his gun and he handed it to her. And he says, please, ma'am, could you do something with this? Because I told God, if you are real, have somebody, have a lady stand in front of her, on her head in that, in front of that Coke machine. And you did it. So God bless you and you have a nice day.